The Toronto Raptors absolutely handle the San Antonio Spurs 143-100. Welcome to Raptors Tonight. I'm Randy Urban, joined by Leo Routon, Sherman Hamilton, and Jack Armstrong. Guys, I like your setup. I don't know <laughs> if you know if you like mine or not, but uh, I am not in a bathroom. This is a executive suite or a lounge uh, that I found here in, in San Antonio. So don't make fun of me too much. Impressive. Jack, Impressive. Yeah, I'm in the press room, so I'm moving okay. along. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Um, Sherm, I'll start with you. I, I know this is a young Spurs team, and, and you're not really expecting much from them this season, but this was an impressive win by the Raptors. What did you like about how they put their stamp on the team or on this game? Well, I, I thought they came out in that first quarter and defensively just took everything away. From the San Antonio Spurs, they turned them over. They got out in transition. They really made it difficult for a young Spurs team to figure out how to maneuver and how to operate in the half court. And, and to me, that was a great sign. I mean, OG ananobi has been amazing on the defensive end all season long. And again, he was great to start this game. But the overall activity of this group, you've got five guys. They're flying around the court. They're, they're active. Their hands are all over the place. They're moving bodies. They're getting in the way of people. They're just so energized on the defensive side of the basketball to start this game. I think San Antonio, as a young team, just didn't know how to respond. Now, they figured it out halfway through that first quarter. But from the jump, you go on the road, you want to make sure you have an imprint on the start of the game. I thought they did a great job of doing that. Yeah. Jack, you were a courtside for this one. Was there a stat of the night for you? That sort well, of I don't have, illustrated I don't have, this game. I don't have the number of deflections, but obviously you look at the turnovers forced and the fast break points and the points in a paint. I just think that the defensive energy, uh, Leo, was just so great uh, creating the style of play. I mean, I, that to me, I, I guess the, 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 the focus on the defensive end just unleashes everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, Jacko, uh, it's a great point because uh you know, you look at San Antonio and Utah, right? Two teams that not a lot has been expected of this season, and they're both off to great starts. What do those teams have in common? They play really hard. And we've talked – how many times have we talked about teams that just play hard? If you can just come out and play hard every night during a regular season, you're going to have a fair amount of success. Mm -hmm. The Raptors play hard like those teams, except they have a lot more talent. Right. And that's the difference. And you could see that in this game where San Antonio is a young team and plays hard, but the Raptors took them out of everything they wanted to do. Uh, they did a great job of staying focused. Uh, you've got a lot of guys that I think are taking great pride uh, in what they're doing defensively. They really want to dictate what's going to happen. And, and I think what happens is you start playing like that and a game becomes a lot of fun. You're looking at the score clock. Hey, let, let's just, let's take this away. And then you get out and go, right. You get out and mm -hmm. run. You don't have to, work in offense you don't have to execute anything just get out and run and that's when the game just becomes a lot of fun when you can live off your defense like that so uh you know it's fun to watch and i think like i said i think these guys are really getting into it right now i just want to say one quick thing i mean fred van vliet is such a tremendous defender sherm and he hasn't played the last two games and they haven't missed a beat i mean that to me is like wow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sherm was there an individual performance that stood out to you you know, in that first quarter, you could have picked any one of the five guys that started the game and said they were great. But Pascal, we're going to talk about him. We've talked about him many times throughout the course of this early season. But he is just on another level. He's, he's, awesome. he's legitimately on another level right now. His activity in terms of, forget about the offensive side, the expenditure of energy on the defensive side has been so impressive from Pascal. He's using his ranginess. He's not quitting on plays. He's getting into people. He's in passing lanes. And then when you go to the offensive side, he's doing everything. I mean, his ability to see the floor, make plays for his teammates. He had five assists in that first quarter. The rebounding aspect, the ability to handle the ball and decide and run offense. He is just orchestrating so many things. And the most impressive thing, guys, is he's doing it at such a relentlessly high pace. His mm -hmm. motor doesn't stop, and his continual energy expenditure is at a very high level. But the execution side of it is what's impressive with that high level of energy expenditure. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything looks just, you know, tighter from last season. And that's an amazing thing. Leo, OG, I think, has really come into his own. This is second straight game of five plus steals, which is, you know, the second time he's done that in his career, which is a Raptors record. Uh, he was just awesome tonight. What are you seeing from him? I'm seeing a guy that wants to be all D. And, yeah. and he's, he's he talked about it uh, before the season, and he's playing like that. I mean, you could just see. He's like, he's like a, you know, a dog at a bone, man. He's just trying to get after that basketball. Any loose ball. Uh, I love the way he plays the angles. You know, we were talking about it in studio that, you know, you got good on-ball defenders, and then you got some – you see a lot of good on-ball defenders. When they're off the ball, they get lost. OG is good on ball, off ball, big matchup, small matchup. Doesn't matter, man. This mm -hmm. dude just can flat out guard. So, uh, you know, you know, when I'm watching that Jacko, I see a guy that just wants to, you know, own the game from that side of the floor. You know, mm -hmm. he's a very bright young man. There's great attention to detail. And, uh, you know, I watch him play. And you know, when you when you switch as much as the Raptors do, uh, you not only have to have the book on the traditional small forward you guys are you're guarding you got to have the book on the other four guys that you might switch on to and he seems to have that book and i agree that the, the awareness level when he when he's not guarding the ball is great i mean he just knows where the next action is uh he's, he's just really smart he's been well coached here he's played on good teams and he totally gets the defensive scheme cold mm -hmm. sure i I feel like we've been talking about Boucher every time, ever since he, you know, made his, his debut here this season, but I, I got to point out his, his composure driving to the net. You see his eyes are up and he's really learned to use his body when he he's going against that contact. He just looks so much smoother offensively. And I, I talked to him before the game or at shoot around this morning. And, and he said, a big thing is just age and experience. He, he looks like he's used to this kind of play now. Well, yeah, age and experience brings wisdom. It brings an understanding of, well, what doesn't work. You might have right. tried it and it doesn't work. And it also brings that acceptance level to say, this is my role. This is what I have to do. I'm going to be the best in that role to help this team win. And he's bought in lock, stock, and barrel with what he does coming off the bench. He brings that energy. And to your point about being more controlled, you know, handling the basketball head up, you work on those things. That's mm -hmm. why in the summer when you work on your handles so that when you're in games, you don't have to look down. Your head is up. You can see what's happening. You're more controlled. You're more poised in tough situations, and you don't panic because you have the tools in the toolbox now. And Chris Boucher has done a great job just elevating his game based on knowing what he needs to do, not trying to go outside of that, but just being consistent and providing energy. He's hit the floor, and he's changed games for the Raptors with his energy. Forget about the shooting, but the defensive side as well. He's just playing great basketball. And, you know, when you miss some games, you're chomping at the bit. You want to be a part of the process. He's jumped in there and said, I'm a big part of this process, and I'm going to be there every night for this team. Yeah. Hey, guys, it, 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 and, I know, and I know, Randy, you probably were going to get to this, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to jump ahead of you. So who, who, have we, who we have not talked about so far, all right? Think of, think of a name we haven't talked about. And, and Jack, I'm listening Gary, to the broadcast. Gary, Gary no, Trent. No. Yeah, I'm listening Gary to the Trent. broadcast, yeah. and I'm hearing about everybody playing this great game. And this one dude on the floor has got 24 points. Absolutely. And it's just kind of under the radar. And that's the best way to get 24 points, right? It was just so in the flow. So, you know, just, just as the game's going, boom, you're knocking this down. You take that. You got this. And all the attention is Scotty, is, is, is Chris Boucher, is Pascal Siakam, is OG. And he's just doing his thing, right? Mm -hmm. So even he's down the list on this conversation, and that's the way you want it. If you could drop 24 and be down the list of the conversation, you're doing it right. And Leo, like he's, he's, he's been I doing like this. Yeah, he's been doing this consecutive games no, no, now. No, Randy, Randy, don't, no, Randy, Randy, don't let Jack talk because you didn't even bring his name up. Okay. Don't even go to there. It, no, you were not. You were not. It slipped over. So Listen, Jack, I'm sitting on a pillow here. I got my computer <laughs> on a pillow. I'm trying oh, to make it work. <laughs> well, let me, I, 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 two things. Number one, I think Gary Trent Jr. looks like he's totally like he understands exactly what's expected of him now. Uh, he's not forcing his game at all. He knows he, he trusts that he's he's in, in the scheme of what they do and he knows where he's going to get it. 
Mm-hmm. And and then then beyond Gary Trent Jr., I just want to point out another guy. I don't know about you guys, but watching Delano Banton stroke tonight, like man, oh man, he shot the ball with confidence. Like he squared up. Uh, it looks good every game. His stroke mm-hmm. has been looking good every yeah, game. Yeah, like it's just like man. I'm like every time I see him, I'm like, wow, this kid's really stroking it. Um, sure. I want to talk just a little bit quickly about holistically about this team. And I know that they played the Spurs and the Spurs were undermanned. Well, <laughs> no, holistically. That, I, I'm watching Whoa. this. I'm watching Whoa. this team. If they play remotely <laughs> good, moderately good on offense, they are so hard to beat because you know that defensive energy is going to be there. And it's, it's kind of scary for the other teams that, that they got to go against. Well, that's kind of been their calling card from the jump. You know, this is a team that really has had to to hang their head on the defensive side of the basketball. And when they get away from it, they struggle. Mm-hmm. And I think we saw that that recentering of the focus in that second game against Miami. It was an ugly game. Offensively, nobody could make shots. But defensively, the Raptors made it a nightmare for Miami to try and score. And mm-hmm. they hung around that game, were able to create some separation and get a W. They are an elite defensive team when they're all on the same page. This 6'9 and lengthy lineup, it's a problem. It's a big problem because not only do they have the physical attributes, but mentally there's a desire, there's a, there's a willingness to sacrifice on that side of the basketball for the greater good of the team. And you could see a joy about them when they're flying around there defensively, deflecting passes, creating steals, getting out in transition. There's an energy within that group about what they're trying to accomplish. So this is a different team because of the level they can defend on. And when they Mm -hmm. make the game easy with transition buckets and open floor, three on twos, two on ones, then offense becomes easy as well. And Mm -hmm. now they become a nightmare to deal with. Yeah, guys, real quick, we got to wrap it up here. Um, Obviously, all, we all know that Steve Nash and the Brooklyn Nets have mutually parted ways. I feel like, I'm sure the way you guys feel, he got a raw deal here. Jack? Hey, hey what's the well, easiest I, thing to do? Go ahead, Jack. Well, I, I'll just no, say... Leo, uh, you talk. No, no, I'll just say... Uh, and obviously, Leo, you and Sherm, you guys know him. I, I know Steve well, but you guys know him incredibly well. Um, and to me, honestly, for Steve... I think they did him a favor. Uh, I don't know if you want to coach in a situation like that. I don't know if he'll coach again. Uh, but to me, he wasn't the problem. And uh, I, I, I love Steve Nash. I love Steve Nash, the player. I love Steve Nash, the person. And uh, I feel bad for him. But nonetheless, they did him a favor. He's better mm-hmm. off not being in that situation. But Leo and Sherm, you guys know him a lot better than I do. Go ahead, Sherm. Yeah, it it was a tough situation. I, you know, I spoke to him a little bit, but he was never given an an honest opportunity to coach his team without all the extenuating circumstances that surrounded his team on and off the court. It it just wasn't a fair shot at it. Now, it's only 30 of those jobs in the NBA. He's got to take it. It's, It's something he wanted to do. But I just don't think that he would have ever gotten a fair chance to coach that team. So to Jack's point, it's a bitter pill to swallow, and it was not Steve's fault. Mm-hmm. It was not his fault. This this organization has struggled to get a handle on it since he's been there, and it's going to continue to happen. So it, it's 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 maybe a blessing in disguise. It's just tough to to see a friend go through that. Leo, hey, last word. Think about this. You're going to blame the coach. So in the last two years, uh, I think the numbers are it's, it's within this. You know. Uh, you know, Irving missed um, like 80 games and Durant missed like 90 games and Harden missed like 83 games, right? Last two years. So basically they missed a season out of the last two seasons, right? It, collectively, when those guys were on the floor with 16 games, mm-hmm. they were 13 and three, wow. 13 and three. So yeah, you're going to blame the coach, right? You're going to blame the coach when these guys aren't there. You got guys saying all kinds of stuff, guys creating all kinds of havoc, but you're going to blame the coach. It's not the coach. And you can even go so far as to say it's not, Sean Marks entirely as the GM, former Raptor, because management, you're in New York. The owners of this team want to make a splash. Get these guys. Get these guys. Let's get it's New York, right? Well, you got them. Now enjoy mm-hmm. them, right? Because Steve Nash had nothing to do with the uh, with this team ended up. 
They he averaged 46 wins a game, 46 wins per season, two seasons he was there. And he was a Kevin Durant toenail away from knocking the Milwaukee Bucks out of the playoffs. So I just, it's not about I, Steve Nash. Can I just make one point? And it's big picture, but it, it touches on what we're talking about. You know, there's only a few years left on this nine-year, $24 billion a TV deal that the NBA has. And we all know that the number on the next deal is going to go probably north of 50, somewhere between 50 and 75 billion U.S. So you think of if you're a coach in this league and the salary cap goes through the roof and that now the guy used to coach that was making 10 million is making 20 and that's 20 making 40 and just go on and on and on. It's going to uh, man, oh, man, as much as they pay you to coach it's going to be that much harder to really mm -hmm. when you have, when you have a situation like this, good luck. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, got to stop you there. Next game for the Raptors Friday night against the Dallas Mavericks, 8 30 PM. Eastern is a tip after the game. You can catch Raptors tonight on YouTube and NBA TV Canada. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.